Age of Empires series is one synonymous with the RTS genre, created by Ensemble Studios as far back as 1997. Often known for their iconic Age of Empires 2 Reign of Kings project, or their more unique take on the formula in Age of Mythology. So when news hit the web that a rumored new Age of Empires title was on the way in 2010, rumored to be an Age of Empires 4 release, excitement was certainly brooding. This rumored Age of Empires 4, however, turned out to be far more than just a sequel. Age of Empires Online was an online-only MMORTS hybrid that was set on capitalizing on the success of Age of Empire 2's multiplayer endeavors and its unique blend of economy and military components. Age of Empires Online, however, never managed to get out of its first gear, and was shut down a mere three years after it launched. How did such a well-known RTS attempting its hand at an MMORPG fail so spectacularly? In this episode of Death of a Game, we will tackle the joint failure of robot entertainment and gas-powered games attempt at taking the Age of Empire franchise to the MMO realm. You played two hours to die like this? Kotaku in 2010 reported Microsoft, the publisher behind the Halo Wars and Age of Empires RTS games, was seeking testers for a secret real-time strategy game titled Project S. Likely on purpose, as it both implied a Halo or possible Age of Empires game. The next day, Kotaku published an article showcasing a screenshot of Project S, which was titled Spartan, and showcased a Greek Spartan unit standing triumphantly. A month passed, and at Gamescom of 2010, Microsoft announced that Project Spartan was indeed a new Age of Empires game, except it was an Age of Empires 4. It was an online-only Age of Empires game titled Age of Empires Online. Details were scarce about what this would exactly entail, but it was announced that Robot Entertainment, which consisted of 45 of the former 110 staff members who worked at Ensemble Studios, would be heading development on the new project. Robot Entertainment was founded by Tony Goodman after Microsoft shut down his previous studio, Ensemble Studios. Microsoft had acquired Ensemble Studio back in 2001 and had shut them down in 2009. A story for another video. During Ensemble's run, they sold over 20 million copies of Age of Empires games, and so its shutdown was puzzling to people. But it would seem that Ensemble would transition directly to forming another company, downsizing by at least 50%, but still remaining a player in the world of video game development. With the ex-remnants of Ensemble Studios working at Robot Entertainment and Robot Entertainment in charge of Age of Empires Online, fans were excited to see what the game would entail. The only thing we really knew from the trailer that was showcased was that the game was having a bit more of a cartoony look in its art style than typical Age of Empires games. The rumors about the game said that the game would have a persistent home city that could be built and maintained. It would be a place to stage possible battles or co-op missions, as well as a place to level up and upgrade possible units or tactics. Sort of like a cross between a typical Age of Empires game and maybe more of a browser RTS game like Lord of Ultima or Artifact. One of my favorite sorts of games, by the way. By the start of 2011, Age of Empires Online beta had been ongoing and people were eagerly testing the game. In unexpected news, however, in February of 2011, Microsoft announced that Robot Entertainment would be relinquishing its developing of Age of Empires Online in favor of Chris Taylor's gas-powered games of Supreme Commander fame. <laughs> Well, apparently it wasn't totally surprising, as when asked during an interview if their company was built to complete Age of Empires Online, Patrick Hudson of Robot Entertainment stated that, no, it wasn't the vision of the company to build that game. It was a work-for-hire thing. That game helped us get our start from a funding standpoint. We put everybody on that game to make that game for Microsoft. That's really how Robot got his initial cash to get going. We had a 24-month commitment to that game, and we saw that out. Then, we really went on to what was the vision for the company, to make our own original games. So it turns out that Guest Powered Games had already been working side by side with Robot Entertainment developing Age of Empires Online, at least near the end. A strange process to say the least. Ensemble Studios, the original company behind Age of Empires, was bought by Microsoft and eventually folded, mostly into a company named Robot Entertainment, who apparently didn't want to touch the Age of Empire name anymore and merely used it to secure funding to instead do their own original game. And then a total wildcard, Chris Taylor's company comes in, an avid fan of Age of Empires 2, fans are mostly feeling positive about the whole affair. But it is indeed a strange one. Why didn't Robot Entertainment want to continue development exactly? Could it possibly have to do with the fact that Tony Goodman, who was Ensemble Studios' CEO, left the company? And does this mean anything in itself? Probably not, but still an interesting story. 
Age of Empires Online launch was announced that summer of 2011, set to launch later that same year on August 16th, 2011. What was also announced in that same press release was that the game would be only launching with two civilizations, but promising more content with subsequent updates and premium content packs. Despite sounds of lack of content, however, Gas Powered Games assured everybody that this was the biggest Age of Empires game ever. As promised, Age of Empires Online did indeed launch on August 16th, 2011, and the response was, uh, well, not quite up to the standards expected of an Age of Empires title, barely obtaining a C grade on Metacritic, according to the critics. Age of Empires Online may have its flaws, but like any MMO or a fine wine, it will only improve with age. Players, however, were enjoying the return back to Age of Empires 2 in terms of core gameplay, but despite Age of Empires Online being deemed a free-to-play game, it quickly became apparent that the game wasn't really playable without spending money. As explained on IGN's first impressions of the title, in order to fully upgrade a civilization, it would roughly cost you 18 US dollars. This was necessary if you wanted to be able to use higher level gear, as even though you could loot it in the game, you would not be able to use it unless you spent the money to become a premium member. For a free-to-play game to have no free-to-play currency or way to passively gain items that are normally bought for convenience was truly shocking, even for the time. The critical issue arrived in conjunction with this, as in regards to PvP, you essentially needed to spend money in order to be competitive, as you were able to use your unlocks, upgraded gear, as well as advisors which allowed you to build special units which were very much powerful. Couple this with a matchmaking system for PvP matches being poor and you essentially could have a level 8 player fighting against a level 40 player, and the match would play out exactly as you would expect, a total stomp. The differences between free and premium players were pretty significant, and realistically speaking, a free player could not compete against a premium player. It certainly was a strange launch, and one lacking in serendipity. Age of Empires Online, a free-to-play game, launches with no true way to play the game for free, not to mention it had no skirmish mode, so essentially no way of practicing against the AI or creating your own scenarios and test units. Skirmish mode is the most popular mode in all of Age of Empires. While also the game didn't have a PvP mode that wasn't affected by gear or level, aka a typical PvP mode in an Age of Empires game. That's not counting the fact that the game only launched with two civilizations, though the Persians were promised later that winter and the Celts followed the following summer. Gas Powered Games, realizing these mistakes, quickly put a plan into action to solve these issues. November 2011's patch, we saw the implementation of a champion mode, which was not affected by gear or level and all units were unlocked. This would now become the typical competitive game mode. While Skirmish Mode came out in early 2012, to most people's annoyances, it came as a booster pack, meaning yet another thing that must be purchased. Especially such a baseline feature in an Age of Empires game, Skirmish Mode, which once again is the most popular mode in the entire series. Thanks to a number of graphs, charts, and inside information from Microsoft's producer on Age of Empires, Kevin Perry, we can look at the population of Age of Empires Online at launch and a ways after. At launch, Age of Empires Online had nearly 700,000 players. By the beginning of 2012, it shrunk to below 200,000 players. Concurrent players at launch had it nearly 100,000. By 2012, a mere 15,000. It was clear now that if Age of Empires Online wanted to succeed, it was going to have to put an immense amount of time and money to pull themselves out of a hole that was dug. Something likened to a content drought. Whereas content was introduced, it was gobbled up but not quite enough content to keep players interested, and an audience who is completely reliant on waiting on more content to be released is a restless audience, and that sort of audience usually quits and finds another game to play in the meantime, or never comes back. Thus, the infamous few months after a launch for an MMORPG, which are usually the most critical. Age of Empires Online didn't launch with enough content, and gas-powered games knew this. They were intent on releasing new content and continued to iterate on the game. The first time we see Age of Empires Online population rebound is when Gas Powered Games pushed them to a Steam release, complete with a new civilization, the Celts, which also contained a long campaign that had over 80 missions. The game was now up to four civilizations and had most of its core modes fleshed out by this point. Their launch on Steam was their biggest chance at redemption, and based on population stats, it certainly was helpful in bringing in more heads back to the game, nearly tripling the population. Launch on, on Steam, which we combined with the launch of a new Civ, the Celts, gave us our, our biggest spike ever, almost back up to our launch numbers. Unfortunately though, the success was fleeting. 
As Steam players flooded their game, so did negative reviews and yet more criticism of the game. People's ire were specifically targeted at the game's business model, which despite having a champion mode free to play, the game was still very much not free to play. You still needed to purchase premium civilizations, you still needed to purchase the skirmish mode, and you needed the premium mode simply for the advisors which allowed you to create unique units. These were not earnable by playing the game, which meant that the game wasn't really free to play. This is a significant issue as to why Age of Empires Online could never really pick up Steam. No pun intended. Free-to-play games are effective at making money, because it's the equivalent of giving someone a sample of a bag of chips. Nobody just wants one chip. So maybe you are more enticed to buy a bag after sampling. You can purchase at your own leisure, and you aren't forced to in many of these games. It's more of a testament of time versus money. Do you want to spend more time leveling? Then you don't need to pay money. Unless you want cosmetics or something like that. But if you want content, and you want it immediately, you can purchase it. The problem in Age of Empires Online is the base game wasn't really playable without spending money, which isn't the same thing as being free to play. The genius of free to play games is there's typically not so much pressure to spend money. Not to mention, you aren't capped at a certain amount. Say for example, perhaps on a $60 game you would spend the box price and that's it. With a free to play game, over the course of a year or more, you could spend double, triple, maybe even quadruple that. Forcing someone to spend money versus incentivizing it is a very different premise. When people are forced to buy content, they inevitably think that the game is lacking in it. But when microtransactions are more ease of access based and cheaper because in the case of Age of Empires Online, the cheapest microtransaction item was $7.50 and a pro civilization was as much as $20. These aren't items that you can just purchase willy nilly. Compare this to say for example a $5 skin or a couple dollar XP boost. These are smaller items, but the long term make more money due to how simple yet cost efficient they can be. Not to mention, no free to play currency meant that no matter how much time you put into the game, you needed to spend money. The team behind Age of Empires Online was aware of this, and following their lackluster Steam launch, they decided to revamp their business model in June of 2012 to include Empire Points, which were, as most people are familiar with, the general currency in Age of Empires Online that could be gained through merely playing the game. Finally, Age of Empires Online had actually transitioned to being an actual free-to-play title, and the results were immediately apparent. Kevin Perry later stated that the business model change with the same number of players as before tripled their revenue. So, I felt pretty darn good at this point. But although all of this news was good, and all of these changes were a market improvement from the original game, it didn't seem to be enough to bring players back into the game or reach a wider audience of players. And as 2013 creeped closer and closer, Age of Empires Online seemed to be in a troubling spot. January of 2013, Microsoft suddenly announced that they would be ceasing further updates on Age of Empires Online. Microsoft's statement was as following. Creating top-tier content as we have been for the last year and a half is very expensive, too expensive to maintain for long. As it turns out, we can no longer afford to keep creating it. Age of Empires Online already had a large amount of high-quality, handcrafted entertainment, and adding more is no longer cost-effective. Essentially, the amount of time and money it took to create content in Age of Empires Online was not paying off. In fact, the content created seemed to be requiring more time and money than it was worth. This is really the death blow for many an MMORPG. When it can no longer create content due to not getting enough profit from the content, it essentially is dead in the water. Kevin Perry, who I previously mentioned was a Microsoft producer who worked on Age of Empires Online, stated after the fact that the problem in Age of Empires Online was primarily due to the fact that it launched without enough content. This meant that as soon as the game launched, they had to make a mad dash in order to create new content for the game because of how poor their production model was. In other words, it was taking too long and too much money to complete the kind of content that they needed to complete and the speed that they needed to complete it. That was a tongue twister. An example of this is just take a look at Gas Power Games. They worked on the Persians since they took over developing Age of Empires Online before it launched. Have you seen how Persians decorate? The game launched nearly six months later, effectively meaning that each time Gas Powered Games wanted to create a new civilization, it was going to at least take them three to six months to complete one. For a game that launched with only two civilizations, it meant that they had to spend a tremendous amount of money and resources in order to pump out more civilizations. But when the player base already left the game, they could no longer monetize as they needed, as the content Gas Powered Games was creating required substantial financial requirements. Simply put, as Kevin Perry later stated, the content itself was simply too expensive to create. A month after Microsoft announced giving up on Age of Empires Online, 
Gas Powered Games was purchased by Wargaming, of World of Tanks fame, and renamed to Wargaming Seattle, effectively guaranteeing that they would no longer work with Microsoft or the Age of Empires franchise. It took a few months for Microsoft to fully announce when Age of Empires Online would be shutting down, but it turns out they would delay its inevitable death another year and targeted a July 2014 shutdown date. And just like that, the story of Age of Empires Online had reached its end. It was no longer playable. Well, not quite. It wouldn't be a death of a game if we didn't also get to mention that you can still play the game today. Yes, you can play Age of Empires Online today for free. If you go to projectceleste.com, you can download and play the game for free with not too much of a hassle. Whether you want to play the traditional Age of Empires type gameplay with the skirmish or champion modes, or you want to give the whole MMORTS part of the game a try, it's all there for you. So we know that Age of Empires Online's business model and production model caused it immense issues, and were large reasons that the game failed. But what were other large reasons that the game didn't succeed as originally anticipated? Well, we know a large reason the game had issues was due to its content drought. Even if Age of Empires Online had more content than previous Age of Empires games, it's not likely people would believe it such due to launching with only two civilizations, no skirmish mode, and no traditional PvP mode. I bring this up again to illustrate a simple point. What was their plan if fans of the genre didn't like the MMORTS components? They had no backup plan for that originally, and as Kevin also states in that GDC interview, it's likely due to the fact that they focus too much on attracting a newer audience versus keeping their core audience happy. You do, I think in general, annoy your core at your own peril. When the team behind Age of Empires Online was looking to take the Age of Empires franchise totally online, they seemed to make certain design choices that would directly alienate their previous fans in an attempt to garner a larger audience overall. But I find this to be a faulty plan. Age of Empires as a series already sold over 20 million copies. What more of an audience do you really need? That's an incredible audience. As Kevin Perry even admitted, I think we should have focused first on keeping your core audience happy before trying to reach too far too quick. So, Age of Empires Online launches with features that alienate its core audience, a lack of content, and using the dreaded Windows Live services. Motherfucking games for Windows Live. It, in many ways, was sort of doomed from the start. MMOs already have the burden of satisfying their live audience with constant updates and new content, but launching a game missing key features and also trying to take the typical RTS format and MMOify it, if they not only had to work on developing new content, but they also had to develop their own idea post-launch. Let's be honest here. The MMORTS thing in Age of Empires Online, while cool and certainly unique in ways, was very early in concept. Being one of the first to do the format meant that they had to essentially create the idea from scratch. And I'm not convinced it was really a good idea to start with. Sure, it sounds like a cool concept to combine some sort of Farmville-like game closer to the Lord of Ultima or Artifact Persistent Worlds, these browser games if you will, but then also combining it with a typical Age of Empires game, I felt a little disconnected. Sure, your capital city is living in the game and it's always persistent, but other than the ability to do some lobby-like mechanics and treat it as your staging area, what was really innovative about such? I feel like in many ways, the MMO features of Age of Empires Online serve as nothing more than just a time waster or a gimmick to some extent. My idea for an MMORTS is a little bit simpler and frankly could have been a possibility that Age of Empires Online attempted. I say so you take a traditional browser RTS which allows for persistent worlds and controlling of territories. The way these games balance combat so you don't just get attacked while your AFK is moving on the map takes a certain amount of time. So you always have time to log on, survey the map, make your upgrades and mine resources then log off without fear of being jumped in your sleep. Not to mention, different games and different game worlds can last certain amounts of time, say for example maybe you have a map that lasts 7 days instead of just 1. What if Age of Empires Online took the same concept except when battles were actually initiated it would port to a separate instance and allow you to battle your opponent or opponents in typical Age of Empires fashion? Just throwing out ideas here, but I certainly don't think Age of Empires Online had enough online or massive multiplayer features to warrant it having some sort of pseudo customization system or being dubbed an MMO in the first place. I certainly think an MMORTS is possible, but I think for obvious reasons it's much more of a difficult task than perhaps people originally understood. 
And that, in a nutshell, really sums up Age of Empires Online for me. A not entirely fleshed out concept, released too early in its lifespan with not enough features to keep the core audience satisfied. And thus, the story of Age of Empires Online. What do you think of the idea of an MMORTS? Do you think that Age of Empires Online's system was good enough to be successful long term, minus all of its other issues aforementioned? Do you maybe also like me think that the EVE Online franchise is already an MMORTS and is already quite successful? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.